Hello, welcome to the course PHY5 B06 Computational Physics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Python for Education by Ajit Kumar and Computational Physics by Inashu CA. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 2, NumPy and Matplotly. In the last couple of classes, we discussed about NumPy. In today's class, uh, let's get familiarized with another important Python library known as Matplotlib. It's actually an acronym for Mathematical Plotting Library. So this is a Python library which is used for working with graphs, charts, presentation, etc. Using the modules in Matplotlib, especially PyPlot, we can draw 2D and 3D graphs. It is useful for visualization of data, prediction, trend setting, comparison, etc. And the data for plotting graph is usually taken either in the form of arrays, which is a part of NumPy module, or the regular Python list. Now, usually if you want to plot a graph, uh, you need to first import matplotlib because as I said, the, the plotting module, uh, PyPlot, is part of the uh, matplotlib library. And if you want to uh, work with arrays, you need to also import NumPy. Right? So you need to import multiple uh, libraries. And if you want to uh, make your life easier, you can also import another package known as PyLab. PyLab is actually a convenience package which encompasses many other libraries like matplotlib, numpy, mlab, etc. So if you import PyLab once, all other modules will, uh, by default, will be loaded into your computer. Okay, so I recommend uh, importing PyLab instead of importing matplotlib and numpy separately. Okay, so in my examples, I am going to follow this particular method. So let's plot a, a simple uh, a, a graph now. Okay, so as always, you need to import the corresponding module. Here we are going to import PyLab. So I write from PyLab import star. So all the package functions of PyLab will be imported at once. Then to plot a 2D graph, you need two axes, X and Y. So X is a list with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and Y is a list with elements 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So you can also create a list using the range function, range 1, 5, 1. Right? That will create the same list for you. Similarly, range 5, 9, 1. That will create the Y list for you. Okay. Then the function for plotting the graph is plot. So plot X comma Y. So the x elements will be along the horizontal axis and y elements will be along the vertical axis. So one thing you have to remember, uh, when you give the plot function, uh, the computer will plot the graph and store it in the RAM. And if you want to display the graph on the screen, you need to use another function called show. So you say show bracket, uh, the, the plotted graph will be displayed onto your screen. So once it appears on the screen, you can save it. The default uh, file type is PNG. So you can store it as a PNG image file. So that's what I have done here. So this is your X axis from one to four and Y axis from five to eight as we have defined. And the scaling is done automatically, the step size, etc. If you want, you can tweak that as well using extra commands. And if you look at the graph, this is a continuous line, right? This is known as a line plot. And the default color is blue and the default styling is solid line. You can modify this using appropriate command. We will see that in the, in the coming example. So this is the, uh, the default plot function for you. Let's now look at another example. So before going that, let me explain the, uh, the color codes and the line styles associated with plot function. As I said, the default color code is blue. So the code for blue is B, G for green, R for red, etc. 
Similarly, the default styling is solid line and a single dash represent that. And if you want a, a dotted line, then the colon is there for you. And if you want dash line, you need to use two dashes. And for dash dot, you need to use this particular code. So we will look at a couple of examples involving various combinations of these. So let's take the, the, the same example as before, x equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, y equal to 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 list. And in the previous graphs, uh, I didn't have any title or label. So I know I'm going to provide all that now. So if you want a title for your graph, the keyword is title and inside bracket, inside quotation mark, you give the title. So I give my title as my first graph. So this is what's going to appear. And I want to give two labels to my horizontal and vertical axis. So the keyword is X label and Y label. So I write X label, X axis, Y label, Y axis. So this is how the label come. And then uh, last time I simply wrote plot X, Y. So the default styling was applied. Now I am going to modify. It. So I write plot X comma Y comma R. So R inside quotation mark. So we have seen here R stands for red color. So previously we had a blue solid line. Now I have a red solid line. And the font size you can adjust both for title as well as for the labels. So this is how you have to do title my first graph comma then font size equal to whatever font size you want. So I applied 20 here. So this is the 20 font size. Similarly, for the labels, I applied 14 font size. So this is how it appears. I think the default font size is 12. So using this particular command, you can manipulate the font size. So whatever we have seen so far is a line plot. Right? All the data points are connected using a solid line. And other type, types of plots are scatter plot and a combination of line and scatter plot. So this is an example of a scatter plot. So we take the same two lists x and y and here I write plot x comma y inside quotation mark g o and g stands for green color so your data points are going to appear green in color and o is for circles solid circles so you can see each of your data point is a, a, a discrete green solid circle so this is known as a scatter plot. Now the advantage with scatter plot is you can easily visualize each of the data point but the downside is uh, you do not know the connection between these data points. In this case this is a uh, straight line so it's easy for you to uh, visualize the connection but if you have a, a random uh, a graph like a random function whose shape you do not you are not familiar with then just by looking at a scatter plot, you may not be able to quickly visualize the connection between the individual data points. On the other hand, in the case of uh, a line plot, a solid line plot, the connection is very clear, but you cannot visualize individual data points, right? Everything appears continuous for you. So in such cases, people resort to a combination of line and scatter plot. So this is an example of that. So here advantage you can visualize each of the individual data point and also the connection between the data points are very clear using the, the, the line which is connecting the, the scattered points. Right. So how do you generate this kind of a graph? You take the same two lists, then you write plot x comma y g o. So you have green circles as the data point, then you have a double dash right so double dash gives you a dashed line connecting the green circles okay so this is a line plus scatter plot another example plot x comma y k star so if you look at the color code k stands for black color so you have black stars as the data points then you have a colon. Colon is for a dotted line. So you have dotted lines connecting the black uh, stars. Okay. So these are the different ways you can uh, draw graphs. So either you can use a line plot, scatter plot or a combination of these two. So 
always remember once you plot the graph you need to necessarily use the show function only then the graph will be displayed on your screen now as i said the scaling of the axis is usually done by, by default uh, by python but if you want to manipulate the scaling if you want to show only a particular range of values you can do that using a scaling function so here the keyword is x lim lim for limit so limit of the x axis that's the meaning of x lim then inside bracket you you define the lower value and the upper value lower limit and upper limit so the x axis will be shown from the lower value up to the upper value similarly y lim lower value upper value for the y axis so if you don't want to write two separate lines you can combine these two in a in a single instruction so here the syntax is axis inside a parenthesis you have a pair of square brackets in that you have x lower limit comma x upper limit and y lower limit comma y upper limit so at once you can set the range for both x and y axis so let's look at an example here so we take the same previous example x equal to 1 2 3 4 y equal to 5 6 7 8 so if i want to show x values only from 2 to 4 so i don't want to start from 1 i want to start from 2 then you have to use this particular syntax x lim 2 comma 4 so this is how the image is going to appear so if you uh, recollect the original image this is the original image from 1 to 4 you have x axis now I am going to limit the x-axis to 2, 2 to 4. So only this portion of the graph will be shown. And that's what you see here from 2 to 4 and y-axis as usual from 5 to 8. Similarly, if you want to limit uh, y-axis, you can write y-lim, for example, uh, 6 to 8. So y-values will be limited from 6 to 8 and x-axis will be normal. If you want to limit both the axes, then you have to use this particular syntax. Let's look at an example. Axis 2, 4, 6, 8. What's the meaning of it? X axis is from 2 to 4 and Y axis is from 6 to 8. So that's what you see here. 2 to 4 and 6 to 8. So this is how you can manipulate the appearance of your graph using various increments. So far, we, we discussed about plotting a single graph, a single function. Suppose you want to plot multiple function in a, in a single graph. In that case, you need to use legend. Right? Legend is like a description. Each, each curve corresponds to what? That's the legend. Okay. So let's see how to plot multiple graph and recognize them with the help of legends. So from PyLab, import star. So all the modules are imported x equal to arrange minus 5 5 1 now arrange function is exactly like a range range creates a list arrange creates an array that's the only difference so we know that in range if i say minus 5 5 1 the meaning is it starts from minus 5 all the way to 5 minus 1 which is 4 with a step size of 1 same thing will be done here as well just that the output is an array so you have an array with elements minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, minus 5 to 4 with a step size of 1. So that's the arrange function. So actually this is a part of NumPy module. But as I said, once you import PyLab, NumPy, Matplotlib, everything will be by automatically will be imported. Okay. Now I want to give a title, title solution of two simultaneous equations. So I have a title here. I want to plot two functions. One is uh, y equal to 2x plus 3. Another one is y equal to 3x plus 2. So first y I call as y1 equal to 2x plus 3. Second function I call as y2 equal to 3x plus 2. I want to plot these two simultaneously. Okay. So for every x value I have two y values, y1 and y2. So label of x axis I give as x, label of y axis I give as y. Now I am going to plot the first function x and y1. So plot x comma y1 comma b 
column. B column means I have blue dotted line. Then I want to give the legend or description. So the keyword is label. So comma label equal to uh, description is a text. So you need to use a quotation mark inside quotation mark. Similarly, I plot the other function plot x comma y to r double dash. So you have a red dashed line. Its label is y2. Then you use legend function so that the legend will appear on the screen. Legend bracket. Then you need to show the graph. Show bracket. So this is how the output is going to look like. So you have x axis from minus 5 to 4. Then you have a y axis. Then you have two functions. The first function y1 is a blue dotted line. So you can see the legend here. So without the legend, you don't know which graph corresponds to which function. So once you write the legend, it's very clear. The blue dotted line corresponds to function y1 and the red dashed line corresponds to function y2. So that's the advantage of uh, using the legend function. And one thing you have to particularly keep in mind, especially if you are following the textbook I mentioned in the first slide, uh, Computational Physics by Ina Shu and Python for Education by Ajit Kumar. In both the uh, text, uh, some mistakes are there, uh, especially uh, when it comes to plotting multiple graph. Uh, this particular uh, line is omitted in their code. So if you don't write this particular line, legend bracket, Basically, this legend doesn't appear on your screen. Okay, so whenever you want to put legend, in addition to label function, you have to specifically uh, write this particular line, legend uh, bracket. Okay. And the position of the legend, you can uh, manipulate. Also, you can see there is a frame around the legend. If you want, you can remove that as well. So in this particular graph, the legend appears on the upper left corner. This is the default position and also by default there is a frame around. So you can change that in the next example I will show. So we have the same program. The only thing, the legend I am going to change now. So suppose I want uh, the legend to be placed on the lower right corner. So the keyword for that is lock. Lock stands for location. So in the previous example, we simply put legend bracket. Now inside bracket, I am going to provide extra commands. Lock equal to lower line. So the legend will be placed on the lower right. Similarly, I don't want the frame around the legend. So the keyword is frame on. So when I say frame on equal to false, the frame will be removed. If I write frame on equal to true, the frame will be placed around the legend as in the previous example. So the default condition is true condition. So if you don't mention anything here, by default, you will have a frame around the legend. So this is how uh, you can manipulate the legend. And this is uh, particularly useful when you are uh, plotting multiple graphs in a single plot. If you want to show many graphs in a single screen, then you can use the subplot function. So basically subplot function instructs the computer to show all the graphs in a program on a single screen but as separate plots. The system will divide the computer screen into rows and columns. For example, if you use uh, function subplot m, comma, n, comma, capital N, in this function m stands for number of rows N stands for number of columns and capital N stands for the graph number. I can illustrate this with a couple of examples. If I write subplot 2 comma 3 comma 1, your screen will be divided into two rows and three columns as shown in this figure. Two rows, three columns. So totally you have six sections. And the last digit represent uh, the graph number. So here 2, 3, 1, which means your graph will be placed at the first position. If I want my graph to be placed on the fourth position, then I need to write subplot 2, 3, 4. 
I have two rows, three columns, and my graph will be placed at the subplot four. Okay, so this is how uh, you can display multiple graphs on a single screen. Let's do uh, a couple of quick programs to illustrate subplot. Draw ST graph, VT graph, and VS graph of a freely falling body on a single screen. So you know the problem of a freely falling body, right? S stands for displacement, T for time, V for velocity, right? So as always, uh, uh, you import PyLab first. From PyLab, import star. Then I need to know the final time. Initial time, I take it as zero. So TF is the final time equal to int input enter the final time. Say I enter it as 10 seconds. Okay. Acceleration is nothing but acceleration due to gravity 9.8. You can take it as minus 9.8 by following the convention. It's up to you. As in and initial velocity I take it as zero. Okay. Now I need to first create the, the horizontal axis or the time axis. So previously we used range function, arrange function. Now I am going to use the lin space function. So you know what does the lin space do, right? So it divides the interval between the lower limit and upper limit into n equal subintervals. Okay. So I write zero tf comma hundred. So the interval between zero and tf will be divided into hundred equal subintervals. Okay. Lin space is a part of NumPy module. So once you import PyLab, NumPy is available. Then you know the equation v equal to u plus a t and displacement s equal to u t plus half a t squared. Okay. So I am asked to uh, plot three functions. So there are many ways you can divide your screen. So in this particular example, I divide the screen into four subplots. So subplot two, two. So I have two rows and two columns. The first graph I am going to place at the first position. So subplot. 2, 2, 1. So the whatever graph I am going to plot immediately after this will be placed at the first position. So I give a title displacement time graph. So I have the title here. Then I give x label as time, y label as displacement. So I have displacement here, time here. Unfortunately, this down graph got overlaid with the, up, uh, the upper one. That's why the, the x axis label is not very clear here. Then there is another function grid. So grids helps you to visualize the graph better, right? So this is the grid and uh, it's optional. If you write grid true, uh, you will have the grid as shown in this figure. If you write grid false, there will not be any grid. And if you don't write anything, then also you will not have any grid in your graph. Then I'm going to plot T and S, so time T will be along the x-axis, displacement S will be along the y-axis. I do not give any extra command. That means the default styling will be applied. I will have blue solid lines. Now in the second position, I want to place velocity versus time graph. So I write subplot two, two, two. Second spot for the second graph. X level is time, Y level is velocity, title is velocity time. So you can see how does it appear on the screen. Then grid is true, so I have grid here, then plot t comma v. Again, the default styling will be applied, blue solid lines. Now I want to place the third graph on the third spot. So subplot 223, x label displacement, y label velocity, title is displacement versus velocity graph. It's not overlaid here, it's not clear. Then I have grid, grid true, then plot S comma V. So S along the X axis, velocity V along the Y axis. So this is how you display multiple graphs using the subplot function. It's an assignment for you as shown in this figure. The spacing is not correct. Okay. So using additional commands, you can adjust the spacing between the various subplots. So either you can check online or refer to the textbook. In any case, you find out what is the command, adjust the spacing and uh, print the output. Okay, so that's an assignment for you. Let's do one more example. Draw the same graph, ST graph, VT graph and SP graph for a freely falling body separately using a single program. Okay. 
So you, you need to uh, plot these three graphs separately using a single code. So I'm going to have exactly the same program. The only difference is I am instead of using subplot, in subplot we have seen all the graph will be displayed in a single screen. So I want to display it in different uh, screens. So I use figure function. So when I say figure one, the corresponding graph will be displayed as figure one. You can save it as figure one. Similarly, the second graph before plotting that I, I use the function figure two. So the graph will be named figure 2, I can save it as figure 2. Similarly, the third graph, I save it as figure 3. So in your screen, you have uh, uh, three figures, figure 1, 2, 3. You can view them separately, you can save them separately. Whereas in the case of subplot, you view them simultaneously and you save it as a, a single figure. Here you can view them separately and also save them as three separate figures. Okay. So this is how you plot multiple graphs and display them. So that's for today. In the next class, we will see how to, how to use polar plots and also how to visualize some of the common functions like trigonometric functions, exponential functions, etc. Stay tuned. Thank you.